vastness that staggers. The seas of this planet are a world unto themselves, sometimes furious, sometimes calm, moods ever-changing. The sea is always daring us, daring the sailor seeking adventure, the explorer seeking new worlds, daring the scientists, the dreamers, to pluck the heart of its mysteries, its cities of coral, its monsters that might one day spill onto land, Leviathans, dolphins, dragons, voracious sharks, barracudas. A trillion hungry mouths threaten us and dare us to come explore life in the sea. Descent deep into the heart of the sea, climbing the underwater food chain from the tiniest phytoplankton to the killer whale. Discovering feeding, mating, what makes the humpback sing? Encountering playful dolphins, wily sea lions, giant sea cows, Travel from ocean to ocean, pursuing the exotic, the grotesque, the beautiful unknown. Take part in this discovery of life in the sea. For thousands of years, man was fixed on the shoreline, stewing with curiosity, without the tools or methods with which to dredge the sea's secrets. Then, fathom by fathom, we learned to probe its depths. In our time, we've been able to piece together the story of the waters that cover most of our Earth. It began 300, 400 million years ago. There was then only Pangaea, a single landmass surrounded by a world encircling sea. As this giant supercontinent fractured into lands now familiar, the vast sea became oceans, wide, deep, and blue. We know them now as the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic, and Antarctic. We call our world planet Earth, yet the seas signify a world of water. Ocean covers over 70% of the Earth's surface. As for us, a human body is 70% water. Scientists with all their new technologies can't find another planet with oceans. The widely held theory is that all life comes from water balanced by the delicate position of Earth in relation to the sun. Were we closer to the sun, our oceans would go up in steam. Were we farther from the sun, our oceans would freeze, and life as we know it would come to an end. Beneath the shimmering surface lies a rugged seascape of huge mountains, gentle valleys, and wide open plains. Along the jagged edge where land and sea collide, a continental platform juts outward for up to 50 miles. 
most marine life thrives within this shallow shelf, less than 1,000 feet deep, a narrow region that counts for less than one-tenth an ocean's area. This garden-like reef filters restless, swimming, darting things, playing an endless game of life and death. Beyond the platform's edge, the continental slope, sliding to the murky depths of an abyss. Home to as strange a horde of monsters as ever haunted our fantasies. Deeper still, scattered life forages the sea's floor. To understand survival here, we must fix our gaze on the open ocean, adjust our lenses to the microscopic world of plankton. These floating organisms sustain all life in the sea. Every marine creature contributes in cast-off cells, in eggs, to the composition of plankton. For the tiniest fish to the mightiest whale, plankton is the primary food, the most crucial link in the underwater food chain. This shallow, fertile bowl of life is filled by more sunlight than anywhere else in the sea. Forests of sea plants absorb the sun's energy a process called photosynthesis. From the light saturating them, plants grow, and most importantly, produce oxygen for millions of fish and marine animals, infusing energy into beautiful, diverse gardens of coral. These are not groves of fossil trees, but living beings drinking deep from the rich nectar of creation. Brain coral. Deep wall sponges. All busy animals straining living, floating things that flood the sunken canyons of the sea. Star coral, busily gorging on planktonic worms. Sculptures of a million animals, expanding our notion of architecture. Nooks, crannies, refuge to smaller fish, scrambling to escape detection. Fragile elkhorn coral, magically fizzed upon contact with water. Black coral, so far from our idea of an animal, but it is, composed of delicate calcified structures of tiny and enemy-like creatures. Clubfinger coral, tentacles snatch plankton from passing currents. And the food chain continues as butterfly fish hover, waiting to devour a coral polyp. Coral kingdoms, at once food and shelter, but also submerged forts protecting lands they surround from turbulent ocean storms. Enormous fields break up the force of waves that roll across the sea a precious home for millions upon millions of sea creatures is fragile. In seconds, 
a single diver can destroy what coral animals have struggled eons to create. As land becomes more crowded, less productive, man might turn to sea plants for food. Sea kelp, among the fastest growing living things, it shoots up several inches each day. Anyone who enters is awed by the grandeur. Yet in natural light, much of the splendor is lost. It is only in the glow of a man-made light that the living mosaic of this Indonesian reef bursts forth, revealing wonders unimagined. Countless swarming life forms for which we have colorful names, but about which we know very little. Graceful, the gray angelfish. Flat as a pancake, sliding into narrow crevices for protection, for food. Changing patterns, even colors as they grow. The banded butterfly fish, with its stark black and white patterns. A warm water fish. Smaller, more agile than angel fish, butterfly fish come in colorful, ornate designs. Raccoons. Four-eyed butterfly fish, confusing to predators who cannot decide which end to attack. Rock beauties weave through warm seas, bright yellow slices, solid black. Watch closely as the snout of this bird wrasse changes color. Our only clue that this sex changer has transformed from an egg-producing female to a sperm-producing male. In this way, nature assures propagation of the species. A yellowtail chorus, another member of the strange wrasse family. Of the 250 species of snappers, many are nocturnal creatures. Repose by day, they prowl for supper by night, hardly aware that they themselves may become a supper for humans. But cooks beware, certain species of snapper are poisonous. Snappers feed on grunts, bottom feeding fish, who in turn forage for burrowing creatures. Danger is everywhere. Open sea predators hit the reefs hungry. Death strikes any time, any place. The tiniest worm, the prettiest fish. Dinner for one. The shy, hapless squid, a favorite on everyone's menu, craved by whales, seals, sharks, and yes, people. This unfortunate creature can only wonder who its friends are. Whether by caprice, coincidence, or cosmic plan, Creatures of the sea affirm nature's penchant for novelty. 
a spotted goatfish might look uncommon, but it's no stranger to the Florida coastal and Caribbean reefs. The squirrel fish, another wary creature hiding by day and feeding by night, helped in its quest for food by its extremely large eyes. The scrawled cowfish grows to a foot in length, wrapped in a hard turtle-like shell. A distinctive ridge covers each eye. Reefs closet strange creatures with outrageous eyes, like the hog snapper or the queen triggerfish. The stunning Moorish idol, a beauty found only in the Indo-Pacific reefs. More than 100 species of surgeon fish live among the corals. The orange stripe surgeon fish. Oval in shape, each species hides a knife-like spine, usually folded into a body groove. Threaten or disturb, and the surgeon pulls its knife. The convict tang is built like a surgeon fish, except for the spine. The ocean reefs are dazzling, magical. Pulsing life forms, myriad shapes, sizes, colors. A symphony of creation. This infinite realm is an intricate tapestry. A world of moods. Of whims. Of seasons. Constantly in motion, shaping climate, temperature, affecting our senses, our spirits. Like mariners swept seaward by the tides, we are caught up in its spell, captured by the play of light and shadow, the ever-changing spectacle of life. This is a whale breach, a majestic act of nature, rendered by a colossal servant. Though these incredible beings live entirely in water, they are not fish, but mammals, just like us. Breeding, they carry new life within, giving birth to live young. Whales breathe air in and out of lungs. These ancient leviathans are mammals who adapted to the vast world of the seas. Theirs is a fascinating story one that began 50 million years ago. In the area we now know as Pakistan, scientists first uncovered the bones of a bizarre-looking creature, a streamlined body and nostrils atop its head. No arms, no legs, 
only paddle-like limbs and many sharp teeth. It was a part-time land dweller that often waded into the sea in search of food. Through millennia, this strange, powerful animal adjusted so well to life in the sea, it stayed. Scientifically, all whales belong to the order of cetacea. There are two kinds of cetaceans, those with teeth, who eat like other mammals, and those who eat by straining millions of microorganisms from the seawater through baleen, a thick curtain of fingernail-like substance that acts as a sieve. Whales are categorized into families, of which there are 13. These families are made up of more than 70 different species. We find whales across every inch of the sea. Certain species, such as the humpback, inhabit all oceans. Others are isolated, like Chinese or Amazon River dolphins, for example. Many reasons influence where we might find a particular whale. Water temperature, for example. Several species of dolphin prefer warm, temperate waters, while others, particularly larger whales, cruise icy polar seas, kept warm by thick layers of blubber. Water depth is also important. Whole families of tooth species, like sperm whales, are pelagic. They live in deep, open ocean. Others, like the dusky dolphin, prefer warm, shallow coastal waters. Like all mammals, whales will live where they can find food. The gray whale, for example, migrates from tropical breeding grounds off the coast of Mexico to the rich, cold feeding grounds of the northern polar seas. Driven by instincts as ancient as time, the gray whale, a baleen, covers more than 12,000 miles a year. Most baleen whales are colossal toothless creatures, like these magnificent humpbacks. The male humpback is renowned for its eerie, melancholy songs. Amazingly, each population of humpbacks sing their own unique song Never an original score. Each song transforms sound by sound over time until eventually all local humpbacks are singing the same song. We do not know for certain why they sing. Perhaps to ward off pushy rivals or just to beckon soulfully to a mate who will understand. The right whale, isolated by white, crusty patches of skin. Called callosities, they unleash like weapons in battles during mating season. Not pretty, perhaps, but nature's whimsy bears deeper purpose. These wart-like markings are unique to each whale, like fingerprints to humans. Researchers track old comrades in the wild by searching for these distinctive signposts. Skimmers, bright whales swim at surface with gaping mouths wide open, straining millions of tiny plankton onto a tongue as long as a boat. 
playful, essentially harmless, right whales were once abundant throughout our oceans. Today, they are the rarest of the larger whales, nicknamed by whalers who boasted they were the right whale to hunt. These unfortunate beasts were destined to fall under the whaler's harpoon. Being rich in baleen and blubber, they are slow, sluggish. Guilelessly, they linger in range like colossal sitting ducks, targets easily wounded by primitive spearing. Lifeless, the great mass of blubber betrays them even in death. Trapped afloat, they lie there, unable to sink beyond the whaler's eager grasp, back into the sea that nurtured them. Humans have hunted whales since before the beginning of history. Whale bones were used as rafters in the Stone Age. For primitive peoples, a stranded whale was food from the gods. Hunting began in earnest with the invention of the retrievable harpoon. It took extraordinary courage to hunt down a whale, for life and limb were much at risk when humans faced these giants of the sea. Whaling lured men of certain character. Isolados, as Melville called them in the classic Moby Dick. Loners, misfits, men like Captain Ahab, who fought with all the subtle demonisms of life and thought. All evil to crazy Ahab were visibly personified and made unassailable in Moby Dick. He piled upon the whale's white hump the sum of all the general rage and hate felt by his whole race from Adam down. And then, as if his chest had been a mortar, he burst his hot heart shell upon it. Centuries of primitive whaling ended with deadly inventions. Now fuse-carrying harpoons shot 400 grams of explosive straight to the head. One charge wasn't always enough. Mass slaughter, terrifyingly efficient. As seafaring technology improved, gone was the element of chance. The lone wheeler no longer pitted against the mightiest beast of the sea. Now, in a bloody wake, factory ships tailed the flotilla of death through the oceans. Day and night, shore stations minced and sliced their pitiful fodder, the solids destined for fertilizer and chicken feed, the liquids, lamp and lubricating oil, cosmetics, and candles. Commercial whalers showed no mercy, no selectivity. As one population of whales was slaughtered, they hunted down another, 
then another, killing blues, humpbacks, orcas, plundering most every family, bringing some to the brink of extinction. Finally, a moratorium ended factory ship whaling. Cheap substitutes for whale products destroyed market share. In 1986, an international treaty shut the door on commercial whaling. For now. With man temporarily restrained, whales face only the natural hazards of life in the sea. Many bear scars from shark bites or killers in their own kind. For of all the mighty giants of the sea, one reigns supreme, Orca, the killer whale. could say the waters of the world belong to these master predators. Instantly recognizable, killer whales are giant, graceful mammals, streaked by stark black and white. These are actually giant porpoises. Whales with teeth but not like incisors or molars. Simple cone-shaped teeth designed for biting and grabbing food, not for chewing. Orcas are like wolves of the sea, hunting in packs, ganging up on sharks, on seals. Contrary to popular notions, killer whales mean no harm to humans. Energetic, social, a killer whale often stays within the same community for generations. Tooth whales are highly intelligent. They communicate with each other in complex ways, ways we scarcely understand. It may seem like play, but this thrashing about has a specific purpose. As one rises and crashes, could it be signaling to a friend who breaches in reply? We've long been seeking answers to such intriguing behavior, eager to decode these voices of the sea. The sense of sight is of little value in murky ocean depths. There, the sense of sound takes on a new dimension. Sound courses faster and farther in water than in open air, traveling great distances, 5,000 feet a second. Squeaks, groans, clicks. They're incessant, and they're amazing. These clicks and whistles are like dialects understandable only to the members of each community. These sounds are more than just language. They are the outreach of what has been called the whale's sixth sense. How whales transmit these sounds and receive them makes up their uncanny ability to echolocate. Each whale projects sound toward an object and waits for echo waves to return. The speed and strength of the echo reveals precise details about the shape, the size of what's ahead, how far away it is, what it might be. It's like sonar, only far more sophisticated. This whale is full of surprises. It will rise upright, surveying its domain. This is known as spy hopping, whale as periscope. For so many reasons, including superior intelligence, 
has this whale been crowned the monarch of the sea? Though whales are warm-blooded mammals, they have much in common with cold-blooded fish. Both are vertebrates. They have backbones, but they belong to different groups within the vertebrates. Whales belong to a form of life that includes people. Fish are a form of life unto themselves. Like humans, a whale's body temperature is controlled internally. A fish changes its body temperature with each new environment. At some time or other, all mammals have hair. The mouth of the whale is fringed by a few coarse, bristly hairs. Fish are hairless, covered instead with overlapping layers of scales. Whale skin is smooth, not scaly, like rubber glistening in the sun. Both creatures have tails of different shapes. Fish have an upright tail fin. A fish swims by moving its tail fin from side to side. While a whale has two horizontal fins, called flukes. He swims by moving the flukes up and down. The most important difference between whales and fish is in the way they breathe. Fish take in water through their mouths. Gills extract the oxygen from the water. Whales rise to the surface to breathe, inhaling through a blowhole at the top of the skull, their lungs extracting oxygen from the air and exhaling with a quick spout of water. Then they dive below. The strong muscles around the blowhole relax and seal it off so that water can't enter the lungs. A sperm whale dives deeper than the depths of lurking submarines. The whale is streamlined, blunter up front, tapering to the rear. Water glides over this massive hulk without drag, without resistance. Yes, streamlined. Whales hug their flippers to their bodies and bullet through the sea. It's difficult for us to tell a male from a female. Reproductive organs are concealed underside. Although clearly, this unusual specimen is a male. For centuries, man quaked in fear of these great sea beasts, these monsters. Mariners told hair-raising stories of them gobbling up entire schooners, mastheads, crews and all. The fearful trembled and the stay-at-homes dreamed of voyages they would never make. But Melville's Captain Ahab from the pages of Moby Dick brought to life the sea's sweet mysteries, whose gentle, awful stirring seemed to speak of some hidden soul beneath. Legend places that hidden soul within the heart of the whale. In the biblical account, Jonah is delivered from the belly of a great fish. For centuries, believers thought that great fish to be a whale who becomes an instrument of divinity, an expression of God's mercy. Centuries pass, we're still caught above the surface, grasping at something wider and deeper than our imagination, endlessly searching for ties that link us, eager to tread the waters of the whale's mysteries, peering down for some quirk or trait that could crack the code of mutual understanding, so we can cry, yes, yes. Now we truly know the whale.
creatures in the sea. None is more beloved by humans than the dolphin. Graceful, engaging, dolphins weave their own strange spell, tempting us to join them in a world that seems without danger. These animals play joyfully, cry like children. To us, they're more than pets, happy lassies of the sea, more than the assurance that the sea is not all monsters, all sharks, teeth, and terror. that evoke in us the limitless possibilities of life. Each, in its own way, grasps its share of the force within creation, to prosper and to multiply, to play their roles with gusto and grace in the drama of life, to swim by their side, to hear their songs, to look into their eyes, is to sense an unusual intelligence looking back. Creatures of passion, pleasure, with freedom, the envy of humans. To see, to touch, to cross the gulf between two worlds is to embrace the dancers in the dance. Something in them beckons us to swim, to be free. To share their unbridled exuberance. Dolphins awaken the primal urge of life and the primal joy. Of all cetaceans, we know them best because of their long history in captivity. We began collecting live dolphins in the name of scientific understanding. Early efforts at capture were clumsy, crude. World-renowned explorers spent long months trying to seize a single specimen without success. But much was learned about the dolphin's gentle nature. A team of divers once came upon a baby dolphin, a prize so easy they could not resist they succeeded in lassoing the baby. Suddenly, as they were hauling the little body aboard, its mother sprang out of the blue. She was frantic, lunging toward her calf. Large and powerful, she frightened the divers. But she just kept circling, calling to her calf, pleading for the return of her baby. Not once did she attack the divers. Finally, unable to bear her plaintive cries, they freed the calf. Reunited, mother and baby swam out of sight. Within this old story lies a special meaning. No matter how much we pursue or prod or restrict them, dolphins show no ill will toward humans. They greet us with joyful hearts, alert minds, welcoming us to a world that is far more theirs than ours. Dolphins are the largest, most diverse living cetacean family, 
with a fossil record dating back 11 million years. Dolphins are fast, resilient, infinitely more maneuverable than any machines designed by man. Even the military enlists them for the dangerous task of locating mines. Friendly, bursting with energy, they leap wildly into the air. They seem to love the applause, the attention for their many gifts. Some dolphins actually have helped fishermen corral fish into nets. The bottlenose is the largest of the beaked dolphins, with a long, robust body, pointed pectoral fins, and a short, stout beak. Sharp, conical teeth line the upper and lower jaws. We don't know how many dolphins there are in the seas, but we do know that thousands are killed every year. Sometimes they're slaughtered for food. More often, they're killed by fishermen who want them out of the way. There is a true dolphin called Audley, the false killer whale. This species is renowned for the way it responds to human commands and for breaching. Typically dolphin-like in shape and color, except it has no beak. A long torpedo-like body with an extended tail stock. The pectoral fins have a distinctive hump on their leading edge. The flukes are slender and pointed. At the arena, these false killer whales feed on squid and fish. But in the wild, they will prey on other dolphins and on young or sick whales. Dolphins share all the abilities of tooth whales, a keen sense of hearing, seeing, touching, tasting, keeping them in perfect balance with their world. They have very large pupils, allowing for remarkable adaptability in seeing. They can switch easily from the intense glare of the sun to the twilight world below. The shape of the lens of the eye changes for above and below water vision. Their almost human intelligence prompts us to cling to old tales of angels of mercy rescuing drowning sailors, gentle playmates to lost children. The warp and woof of fables are woven into science fiction. Dolphins that speak a human language, dancing to our commands, champions of good over evil. Yet truth surpasses even the wildest fiction. Acclaim this marine wonder for the uncharted depths of its intellect, for the fact that it comes in peace, for the concern it shows creatures who are ill or wounded. Scientists know they still have much to learn from the dolphin. But for the rest of us, we may savor the moments watching these wonderful creatures joyfully pursuing their lives. Harbor seals. They look lifeless in the solitude of this bay, but they are resting, waiting for new life to be born. Most are female, preparing for the birthing season. Many are pregnant, some already in labor. Soon, the first baby arrives. Only minutes old, the umbilical cord is still attached. 
Startled by the light, it tries to shield its eyes. Like a human baby, everything goes to the mouth, hungry less for food than for knowledge, about itself and its new surroundings. The young seal reaches out for comfort, but this is not its mother. Female seals often act as surrogates or nannies. The natural mother may not appreciate the gesture. Standing her ground, she claims her own. Soon the little one is initiated into the sea. Unsure, it presses closer to mother. The first few days are spent learning the secrets of their new home. Many lazy months may pass before the pups are ready to venture beyond the waves. Hugging the shoreline, they practice for when the time comes to catch prey. Seal and sea lion are closely related. Unlike true seals, sea lions have small external ears, and they can turn their flippers forward to move about on land. True seals have no external ears, only tiny wrinkled openings. A seal's legs are turned backward. They cannot pivot forward to propel them over land. Instead, they wriggle and hunch, rolling and sliding wherever possible. This might look ineffective, but some seals can outdistance humans. Southern sea lions, doing what they do best, basking along the rocky shores of South America. They thrive on this rugged shoreline, a haven of two worlds. Cold, nutrient-rich water within safe distance of land. Although the sea nourishes them, the shore offers security, particularly for the pups born each spring. Feeding, mating, giving birth, enjoying the warm sun. These are life fulfilled. Fish are their main diet, and they'll journey far in search of well-stocked waters. We are not yet certain, but it seems that sea lions may have echolocation skills. This may explain their ability to hunt and to find breathing holes during the long months of polar darkness. Even their wide saucer eyes offer no clues to an uncanny ability to navigate in the lightless waters of winter. Every denizen of the sea has its natural enemy. Survival requires being constantly alert for predators. This may look like play. It isn't. It's an act of self-preservation, a lookout for intruders. In shimmering shallows, they transform before our eyes. With limbs modified to form flippers, even sea lions weighing hundreds of pounds can swim with grace, with agility. Excellent divers, the adults easily plunge to depths of 800 feet in search of food. Far from circuses, here in the wild where they belong, they are graceful, fluid, acrobats of the sea. Male sea lions are the overbearing rulers of their harem. 
Through the seasons, the harem holds together, gorging on shellfish and sea urchins. Lively and inquisitive, sea lions are well able to stay fat on the bounty that the sea offers. There are more than a hundred species of mammals that can call the sea home. These mammals share much in common, yet each has its own distinct way of life, its special place beyond the waves. The manatee has its own way. This gentle giant spends every hour of its life in the sea. Tame, melancholy, almost cow-like. It can weigh up to 1,300 pounds. Home is in the tropics, coastal rivers. Manatees graze on plants, weeds, algae, keeping vital waterways free of clogging vegetation. Ironically, it's the beneficiaries of this service, the powerboat traffic, that is pushing them close to extinction through propeller injuries. Their forelimbs, shaped like paddles, allow them a manatee hug. Manatees are not supposed to walk, but sometimes they do, on those forelimbs. Perhaps this reminds them of their distant cousins, the elephant. The family resemblance is striking. Divers pet these docile creatures who bask in the affection. Improbable as it may seem, the manatee is part of a remarkable story of discovery. On his first voyage, Columbus espied a mermaid in the distance. Later, this mermaid was identified as a manatee nursing her young. Looking at them now makes one wonder whether Columbus had been too long at sea. In the cold white world of the Antarctic, there's a penguin rookery that's as noisy and congested as midtown Manhattan. Penguins delight us on a visit to the zoo. Here is home for them. Oh, they're still funny, Chaplin-like characters in black coats and starchy white fronts. But here, there are no free fish. Survival is a struggle. Seventeen different species thrive here in the Antarctic. The Gentoo penguins, the chinstrap penguins, the majestic emperor penguin is known for its stately demeanor and elegant gold band. It's often called the most Antarctic of them all. Emperors breed in the winter. For two months, it is they who, without rest or food, incubate the eggs and cuddle them between their webbed feet. Then there are the comics, the frolicsome adelaides. Adult penguins have only two 